The show starts off in a convent with me, a kind novice, or none in training. One day during a worship service, she notices a girl watching a pop video on her tablet, so she tries to intervene, but accidentally causes the music to blare out loud. Because of the disruption, she is punished with cleaning duties. Later, a strange man named Hoon begins following her in his car. Our girl assumes he's a kidnapper, so she tries to flee. But when the man begs her for help, she eventually stops and hears him out. He then gets down on his knees and claims that her twin brother, Nam, who is a pop star, has been in an accident. He reveals that he's actually the boy's personal manager, and Nam has recently been selected as the new member of the biggest pop idol group in the country, Angel. Who needs me to impersonate her twin brother in order to sign some important documents? Our heroine is apprehensive about the situation and doesn't know what to do, but when the man continues to beg, she agrees to help. After this, he takes her to the AN agency, which is swarming with fans of the famous idol group. Me changes out of her religious garb and quickly signs the contract to be part of AN Gel. However, when she's introduced to the group, the lead singer, Ty, is skeptical of her abilities. So he drags her to a studio and asks her to sing for him, threatening to tear up the contract if she doesn't. Fearing exposure, she tries to conceal her voice, but under threat, she sings beautifully, impressing everyone. The next day, Mi plans to leave for the convent in Rome, but Hoon begs her to stay for a month, claiming that her brother needs surgery. She agrees, but later changes her mind and goes to the airport only to encounter Ty. While trying to flee, she mistakenly drops her plane ticket. The handsome lead singer picks it up and tries to return it to the owner. His bandmates also join him in the search. Mi, who is back in her habit, attempts to hide from them, but in the process, she misses her flight. In the next scene, she recalls a conversation with Hoon where she learned that her brother wanted to find their estranged mother through singing. It turns out that their mother used to be a famous singer. This inspires a new purpose in life, so she decides to help her brother out. Later, for a press conference, she once again presents as Nam. The following day, she moves into the A.N. Gel mansion and accidentally enters Tay's room. When he spots her, he sets some rules for their cohabitants and also makes her apologize. Later, she goes to a party and gets excessively drunk. Her bandmates help her out, but they are clearly amused by her actions. The next day, Mi wakes up with a hangover after a wild night. Her injured lip reminds her of an embarrassing incident from the previous night. She had fallen on top of someone and their lips accidentally smashed, but she can't remember whose. She apologizes to Jeremy, another band member, but it was actually Ty. When she learns this, she tries to make amends, but he ignores her and walks away. Later, Mi attempts to fix a candle mishap in Ty's room, but accidentally spits on it just as he walks in. Furious, he begins scolding her for her carelessness. When she tries to apologize, she accidentally gets hit by a trophy and ends up injured. Meanwhile, Shin Wu, the third band member, begins to suspect that Mi is a girl. The other day after the party, he had helped her to her room, and this is when his doubts began. On the other hand, the sweet and charismatic Jeremy is oblivious to the situation. After a couple of weeks, our heroine is pressured to debut at the Asian Music Festival, despite not being ready, but she works hard to make her brother proud. During the festival, Ty catches a glimpse of Mi stuffing her pants, which makes him realize that she's actually a girl. When he tries to confront her, a reporter interferes to take some pictures of the band. He tries to tell the band manager soon, but gets blown off in the process. One day, Mi avoids showering with the boys for obvious reasons. However, the situation becomes comical when the downstairs showers break, causing the boys to join her in the bathroom. By the time they arrive, she has already dressed, but now she has to go through them to get out of the bathroom. In this challenging situation, she prays to Mother Superior for guidance and starts imagining the boys as angels. This actually helps her to get out of the bathroom. In the next scene, Ty confronts me privately and reveals that he knows her secret. He is now determined to inform the manager. Our heroine pleads with him to hear her out, but he leaves with an evil smirk on his face. As he walks away, Mi cleverly swipes his phone, which contains the video recording of her confessing her true identity. Ty had stumbled across the recording when he was going through some CCTV footage. In the video, she can be seen talking to her stylist while they're transforming her to look like a guy. She admits to stuffing her clothes because she's a girl. In the present, Mi dashes away with the phone while Ty chases after her. He eventually corners her on a second-story landing and begins tussling with her. Unfortunately, due to the struggle, the phone ends up flying over the railing and onto a truck below. Enraged, Ty forces her to get onto the truck's roof to retrieve it. She obliges, but as soon as she gets there, panic sets in as she's stranded there and the vehicle starts moving. When the truck stops at a red light, he yells at her to get off. Me jumps and he tries to catch her, but fails miserably. The incident leaves both of them a little injured, so they limp all the way home.
Later, she reports to Hoon that her secret is out. This worries him, but he suggests that if they can get rid of Ty, their secret will be safe. In the next scene, Jeremy notices me and Ty arguing back and forth regarding the newly discovered truth. Unaware of the complete scenario, he asks if she's angered their hot-headed lead singer. Our girl playfully replies that Ty is accusing her of being a nuisance. Meanwhile, Shin Woo notices her injuries and compares her to a lost dog, saying he feels the need to take care of her. As the group continues talking, Ty's mother, Hua Ron, who is also a famous singer, suddenly appears. It's revealed that the mother-son duo are not on good terms because she left him when he was just a child. Therefore, every time he sees her, he grapples with feelings of anger and abandonment. The following day, Mi goes to the band manager Soong's office to reveal her real identity. However, at the last second, she remembers her brother's dream and changes her mind. She is now even more determined to find their mother. Later, she meets Ty outside his apartment and offers him a ring that symbolizes her commitment to staying with A and Gel. Unfortunately, he refuses to accept it and seemingly throws it into the stream below. This shatters her poor girl and she frantically begins looking for it in the water. Seeing her condition, Ty reveals that he had the ring all along and never threw it into the stream. When Mi sees the ring, she hugs him in gratitude. He tries to push her off, but she holds tight. As a result, he has no choice but to endure the hug. Afterward, she thanks him for not revealing her secret to others while also claiming that she won't give up on her dream. Consequently, Ty agrees not to report her for the time being. In the next scene, the group has a promotional photo shoot. During this time, Mi struggles with the concept of posing in water because it is entirely new for her. She shoots and reshoots multiple times, but her insecurity takes over. Thankfully, Shin offers her some peace of mind by sharing his own embarrassing experience. He claims that his first shoot was even worse than hers. As the two are talking lightheartedly, Jeremy observes them from a distance. He misunderstands their interaction, thinking they are getting close. After the photo shoot, Mi tries to change into dry clothes without exposing herself in the locker room. Ty, who enjoys poking at her insecurities, teases her, but does tell her to be careful. Having no other choice, she sneaks back into the now empty pool area to change her clothes. But as soon as she begins, one of the crew members arrives there to pick up some equipment. When the lights suddenly turn on, it startles our girl and she jumps right into the pool. While trying to stay hidden, she stays in the water for so long that she starts to lose consciousness. Just when it appears that she might drown, Ty jumps into the pool and saves her. However, during the process, she subconsciously stomps on his shoulder and pushes him under. Mi eventually regains her wits and gets out of the pool, but she is confused as to who saved her. Just then, she turns back to see Ty floating on the water. Shortly after, an ambulance arrives and he is wheeled out on a stretcher. The incident quickly goes viral and the fans misinterpret that Mi was the one who saved him. They start mad praising her, which obviously irritates our hero. Following this, we meet a top star named Tai, who is just a bundle of sweetness in front of the camera, but a complete narcissist behind the scenes. She is shooting at the same hospital where Tai is being treated. One day after finishing her shoot, Hei mistakenly enters his van. Initially, she puts on her public persona, acting all sweet and kind. However, Tai has heard the rumors about her, so he refuses to buy into her ploy. Back at the Angel residence, Jeremy playfully confronts me about what happened at the pool. Their interaction takes a humorous turn as he chases her with a garden hose. But things get awkward when he gets aroused, seeing her dripping with water. Just then, Shin steps in to intervene in their play fight. He reminds them that their first performance as a new group is approaching, so no one can afford to get sick. He then approaches me and asks her about the pool incident. Before she can reply to him, Ty arrives at the scene and tells him that it was his mistake. He lies, claiming that he had slipped and fallen, and she had helped him just in time. But Shin doesn't really buy it because he knows that Ty never makes a mistake. He senses that there's more to the pool story than meets the eye, which only fuels his suspicion. As the band prepares for their upcoming performance, Mi works hard to improve. She even asks for autograph advice from her fellow bandmates. Later that night, Ty nonchalantly leaves his autograph for Mi, but when he discovers that she asked Shin for help, he feels hurt. It's evident that he has started to develop feelings for her, but hasn't realized it just yet. Following this, we are taken to Mi's aunt, who is in a bit of trouble. Apparently, she got into a brawl with her neighbor and is now locked up in a cell with other mates. She plans to get out with the help of her famous nephew, Nam. She tells her cellmates that Nam's father, i.e. her brother, was a well-known songwriter. He wrote several songs during his career, in which one was for the famous singer Hua Ron. A little while later, the aunt is bailed out by a friend, and she immediately writes a letter to her famous nephew, claiming to have information about his mother. Elsewhere, Mi reads the letter and gets excited as she's finally going to meet her mother. However, she is currently unable to do so due to her band's rehearsal schedule. 
Ty advises her to focus on their performance and not get kicked out of the group. But in response, she reveals that she may leave soon, as she has found the person she was looking for. Hearing this, our hero's reaction is disappointment, as he doesn't want her to go. The scene then cuts to the band's debut performance, which appears to be going well. But later, Mi receives a heartbreaking message from her aunt. It reveals that her mother has already passed away. After going through the text, she goes numb for a while and then rushes to the balcony. Ty notices her and realizes that something bad has happened, so he follows her to the balcony. While he comforts her, the rest of the bandmates spot them. Following the incident, Ty becomes protective of Mi and insists that she can't do the interviews in her current state. He takes care of her and even suggests that she should leave the building as soon as possible. Just then, the stylist comes up with a plan and suggests that they disguise her as a female pop star. This way, she can get out of the main building without being noticed. Mi pulls herself together and decides to follow the stylist's plan. After the makeover, Ty is shocked to see how pretty she looks as a girl. He can't help but take another look before leaving. He also comments on how weird it feels to see her like this. After this, the two head downstairs to exit the building. However, there's a paparazzi skulking around looking for some juicy gossip. He pursues our couple for quite some time, but thankfully, they manage to ditch him. Before parting ways, Ty advises me to head straight into the waiting van and not look anybody in the eye. After she promises to follow his orders, he returns to the building to rejoin the rest of the group. On his way, he stumbles upon Hei, who has just finished her performance. Suddenly, a reporter arrives at the scene and starts asking ridiculous questions. Our hero doesn't have time for this, so he simply leaves. In the meantime, Mia arrives at a residence where she is met by her aunt, Jay. The woman becomes emotional and reveals that her brother had entrusted the little twins to her when he was sick, but because Aunt Jay was struggling financially, she had to give them up for adoption. Eventually, Mi ended up at the convent, while Nam went on his way to pursue his career in singing. She further reveals that their mother died when they were just kids. Our curious heroine asks for more information on her mother, but Auntie only knows that she was a singer. She never actually met her in person. Hearing this, Mi becomes sad and wonders what her parents were like. Later that night, the ANGEL members throw a surprise party for her to celebrate her first performance. During the celebration, Jeremy tries to make me laugh, but fails. He then reminisces about the early days when he was the funny one in the group. He also remembers that Trey had a special skill that he used to perform on variety shows, so he suggests watching those clips. The band leader is uncomfortable with the idea and refuses, but the rest of the members eventually convince him. In the clips, the ANGEL members look green and unnatural during their early days. When Tay feels awkward, he tells them to stop before leaving the room. But when he comes back later, he finds them still watching it. Mi states that he looked very handsome back then and she enjoyed every single clip. Ty, who is barely containing his blushing face, tries to ignore her. But his mood quickly shifts when she mentions that she plans to leave, even though she hasn't found her mother yet. Our hero is clearly upset to hear this. Later, Shin helps Mi clean up and they have a little chat. Out of the blue, he asks her to hold out her hand, which surprises her. But it turns out he just wants her to hold some dishes. The following day, Ty goes to a salon and changes his hairstyle. It's evident that he's doing so because of Mi's comment from the other day. He mutters to himself that he's not the best looking anymore, so he needs to step up. After a while, he notices Hei at the same salon, having her hair done. The pop star says that she knows about his secret affair with a woman. She even displays a picture of him and the woman from the other day. However, Ty downplays the situation as the photo is very blurry and shows no kind of indiscretion. In the next scene during dance rehearsals, the group watches a home shopping channel. When Mi admires a pair of pretty shoes, it raises some eyebrows as she's supposed to be a guy. Fortunately, she quickly comes to her senses and makes up an excuse. Meanwhile, Shin, who also knows the truth about her identity, gets the idea to buy her the shoes. One day, manager Sung takes Tai to a meeting with the famous music star, Hua Ron, who is none other than his own mother. After a while, she orders a meal which includes shrimp. When our hero consumes it, he immediately feels uneasy and rushes to the bathroom. It's revealed that he's allergic to shrimp, but his absentee mother completely forgot about it. Meanwhile, Shin takes me to a restaurant for lunch. As they talk, she accidentally spills juice on her clothes, prompting her to head to the restroom. On her way, she encounters Tai, who happens to be at the same place. She follows him, but then gets lost and can't find her way back to the restaurant. Elsewhere, the band stylist returns some clothes to Hei, which she used to disguise Mi in order to get her out of the building. The pop star is already suspicious, so she cleverly asks whether they were able to get the woman out of the building. Hearing this, the stylist assumes she already knows about their secret, so she casually mentions that they will be in a lot of trouble if people discover that Mi is actually a girl. 
Hei is understandably startled by this revelation, but manages to play along to get more out of the noob stylist. In the evening, Aunt Jay visits the ANGEL residence asking to stay with me for a while. Our heroine agrees, but this brings up the problem of rooming arrangements. Tai suggests that she stay with him, which makes Shin uncomfortable. Following this, he sets some rules for the room-sharing situation, including keeping the lights on, which makes it hard for me to sleep. While lying on the floor, she stares at Tai and finds him very attractive. Now that he's asleep, she decides to turn off the lights. However, she accidentally touches a taser. She ends up in an awkward situation after fainting and spending the night on top of him. The following morning, Hun walks in and is shocked to see the two together. His imagination runs wild as he tries to figure out what the AF is going on. Seeing a taser, he initially thinks that Tai might have been the one who tased me. Hoon envisions another dramatic scenario where she might have tased him to protect herself from his advances. However, he quickly realizes that this doesn't make sense, since me wouldn't still be around if she'd tased him. He then considers the possibility that she made advances on the nervous tie and tased him to prevent him from running away. Eventually, the truth comes out and our girl reveals to everyone that she accidentally tased herself. Hoon is relieved that there was no hanky-panky going on and advises her to drink water to recover. Meanwhile, Shin seems to be in a better mood than yesterday and asks about how Mi felt during her first night bunking with Tai. When she reveals that she fainted, he misinterprets that she actually had a good time. He then expresses his disappointment at being stood up by her at the restaurant because she never returned after going to the bathroom. In response, she apologizes to him and explains everything that happened yesterday. Later that afternoon, Hei arrives at the AN Entertainment offices to see the manager, but her real interest is in Tai. She gives him VIP screening tickets for her upcoming movie and asks him to bring the ANGEL members to the event. She then manipulates her way into visiting Tai at the studio while he is working on a song. Our hero is annoyed by her presence, but she continues to try to engage him. When he refuses to open the door to his studio, she resorts to writing notes to communicate with him. Tai responds with a playful teasing, but continues to refuse to let her in. The situation becomes comical when Hei realizes that she misspelled a word in her note as he corrects her for it. Frustrated, she throws a tantrum and Tai adds CCTV to the note, implying that security cameras are watching her every move. As a result, the self-absorbed pop star eventually leaves in frustration. During lunch, Mia overhears the manager asking Tai if there is anything going on between him and Hei. It turns out rumors have been swirling about the two dating each other. A little pang of jealousy hits her because she has started developing feelings for him. To her relief, he clarifies the matter saying that he's not interested in the pop star, even in the remotest. In the next scene, the persistent Hei finds a way to spend time with Tai by offering to return his jacket which he had left behind after a shoot. She creates a scene at AN Entertainment offices which prompts reporters to swarm the area. To calm the chaos, our hero tries to help her get out of the way, but this only generates more attention. The reporters buzz around them to get a perfect picture to fabricate a story for themselves. Later, Tai offers to take me back to the church as she has learned the truth about her mother. However, she misinterprets his intentions as wanting to sideline her from the group. She feels sad, realizing she won't have a reason to see him once she returns to her former life. Meanwhile, Hei continues her efforts to get noticed by Tai. She visits the AN Entertainment office once again and approaches him. This time, she threatens to reveal Mi's identity to the swarming reporters, claiming she has learned about their little secret. In a desperate move, our hero kisses her to prevent her from revealing the truth to the media. Sadly, Mi witnesses the kiss. Time stands still for her as she wonders if her feelings of discomfort are similar to an electric shock. As for the reporters, they start publishing stories of the couple's dating life, confirming rumors about their relationship. However, Hei is upset because she wants a real relationship with him, not a fake one. Before leaving, she warns him not to tell anybody about their facade because it will also affect her public persona and status. Her fans would be disappointed if they discovered that she was just playing them. After witnessing the dramatic kiss, Mi conceals her feelings and congratulates Tai for going public with Hei. She later joins in a congratulatory party at their house, but our hero is seemingly moody and storms out. Aunt Jay speculates that he might be embarrassed by the incident, while Jeremy believes that he regrets hiding the relationship from his bandmates. However, in reality, Ty is in a bad mood because he's not happy about me congratulating him. He feels conflicted and grumbles about the situation. Meanwhile, fans of Angel are crying outside the offices because they are both happy and sad about their idol being in a relationship. The next day, the entire band along with Aunt Jay and Hai go to Mi's father's hometown to observe his memorial. 
During the trip, Ty's supposed girlfriend, Ai, insists that he must attend the after party for her movie screening. Our handsome hero doesn't want to, but he has no other choice but to agree. During their journey, Mi buys him a soda, but he still seems irritated with her. To make matters worse, the soda explodes all over him. Apologetically, our heroine gives him a change of clothes, and he begrudgingly puts them on, even though they're too short. Later, when they arrive at the small village, the locals mistake me for Ty's driver. Also, since Aunt Jay had boasted about her famous nephew, it doesn't impress the villagers when they see her small, cheap car. Meanwhile, Hua Ron also visits the grave and asks her son to re-release a song he wrote for her. From their interaction, it's evident he wants nothing to do with her. Later, as me and her aunt are headed to the mountainside, they run into Walron along the way. Our heroine is eager to speak to her, but the latter quickly leaves. Ty, however, seems to have gone missing. Turns out he was playing in the fields and enjoying nature when a pig suddenly started chasing after him. Back at the mountainside, Mei tries to call him, but gets no answer. When he fails to show up after a period of time, she decides to search for him. A few minutes later, she finds him near a stream. Turns out he had come here to wash up and get rid of the pig's smell. As evening falls, our hero becomes annoyed by the dark and his inability to see clearly. He and me stay by the stream and share some humorous stories about their childhood. They then begin gazing at the beautiful stars. Ty states that the moon isn't a star, it just reflects the sun's light, and me responds with a smart-ass joke. Suddenly, Hei arrives causing tension because she's jealous that he ignored her calls all day. Later, she meets with me privately and talks about her relationship with Ty. In a condescending tone, she tells her girl to give them some space. After she leaves, Mi finds herself in a bittersweet moment under the stars. She thinks to herself that there are too many stars in the night sky, but she's like the moon, shining in Tai's brightness. After the band returns to Seoul, Mi has a breakdown during a recording and abruptly runs out of the studio in tears. Tai asked Hoon what happened, and the latter explained that she was advised to really feel the emotion of the song. Unfortunately, our hero misinterprets that her emotions have been directed at Shin Wu, thinking she must like him. While everyone is embellishing their own stories, Mi prays to become invisible as her feelings for Ty overwhelm her. Meanwhile, Jeremy notices her distress, so he comes up with an idea. To cheer her up, he takes her out to eat spicy Indian food, and afterward, they eat ice cream to ease the burn, and then go to an arcade for some fun. Once back at the studio, our heroine apologizes to Hoon for her emotional outburst. In response, he advises her to pull herself together and suggests pressure points to control her emotions. He tells her to touch her ears, hands, or temples when she's struggling with feelings. Mi thanks him, not knowing that his advice is just a placebo. Later, Ty reacts with shock when he sees her making a pig face. Thanks to Hoon's advice, she is literally putting pressure on her nose to control her feelings. The handsome singer thinks she's mocking him about the previous night involving pigs. He believes that she likes Shin and suggests that she pursue him. He even gives her a chart containing all possible scenarios if she were to propose. However, our girl rejects this as she has zero feelings for him. Later, when Shin visits her studio, she hides the chart from him and lies that she's folding paper airplanes. He knows she's hiding something, but he doesn't push. Meanwhile, Tai is preoccupied with Mi. He wonders if she has confessed to Shin. When he becomes anxious, he searches for her and eventually finds her sleeping under her covers. He pretends to be annoyed, but feels somewhat relieved that she didn't confess to Shin. The following day, the management team discusses plans for a music video for their upcoming song. They eventually decide on a high school theme, where the bandmates will wear school uniforms and pretend to be students. The manager then suggests that Tai and Hei work together, as the video will gain more popularity this way. However, our hero is not enthusiastic about working with her. During the rehearsals, Hai is jealous of Mi's interaction with Tai. She interrupts their scene and sarcastically congratulates them on their acting. She also asks him to take her out for lunch, leaving our girl heartbroken. But right then, Shin arrives to escort her home. This makes me realize that people really care about her. Meanwhile, Tai watches them from his car and becomes jealous. Cut to the next scene. It's our hero's birthday, so his mom calls him to meet. As they struggle in uncomfortable silence, he suddenly asks her why she abandoned him. She doesn't answer this, but instead says that she's planning to reveal him as her son for her new project. Hearing this, Ty becomes hurt as she is once again using him for her own selfish gain. As a result, he storms out of there. When Mi notices him upset on his birthday, she wants to help, but doesn't know how. She attempts to do small things to make his day better, like replacing his water bottle and fixing a flickering light. Ty gets suspicious of her behavior and wonders if she's been doing something she shouldn't have. However, our heroine plays it cool, pretending she only saw his birthday gift and nothing else. 
She then offers to let him vent his anger on her if needed. Ty is surprised by her understanding and says she has grown up. As a gesture of their friendship, he wants her to help with his birthday celebration. Our hero jokingly asks for a grand birthday celebration with thousands of guests, famous stars, and media coverage. Mia is taken aback, but promises to do the best she can. During the celebration, she realizes she forgot about his shrimp allergy. But fortunately, just in time, she prevents him from eating anything, saving him from a potential allergic reaction. The ANGEL members later go shopping for presents, but since the options are limited, they settle for cute stationary items with their cartoon caricatures. Ty is embarrassed, but secretly pleased that his character is the best seller. The next day, the group discusses the ANGEL merchandise, and Mi claims that Shin's character is the best. This makes him smile, but Ty feels a bit insecure. In the following days, the group continues filming the music video for their song. During a scene, Hei surprises Ty with a real kiss, leaving him shocked and confused. Mi also cannot hide her emotions as she anxiously watches from the sidelines. However, later he comforts her, causing her mood to instantly improve. In the next scene, as Mi is singing a Christmas carol, that god-awful woman interrupts and drenches her with water for absolutely no reason. Fortunately, Ty covers her with a tablecloth and the other members join in to salvage the situation. The next morning, Mi finds her hair clip on a stuffed animal, which our hero has operated on. This makes her smile, and she jokingly refers to him as Santa Claus. When everything seems to be going well for our girl, she catches a cold because of yesterday's incident. Her band members lovingly prepare warm drinks for her, and she chooses the lemon milk made by Shin. As expected, Ty is disappointed because his drink wasn't chosen. The following day, the band shoots a cell phone commercial. The guys have different colored outfits to match their appeal. Ty asks me about her preferences, and she chooses the white color to represent herself. However, she doesn't reveal why. Meanwhile, Hei overhears their conversation and becomes jealous. In a fit of rage, she drags me to the men's restroom and demands to know if she has feelings for Ty. Our girl doesn't know what to say, so she remains silent. She is now worried that her secret will be exposed. Following this, Hei tricks the ANGEL members into believing that Mi is severely ill, so Sung decides to give them a ride back home. On the way, the biatch directs subtle comments at Mi, emphasizing her role in the band and her importance for the group's success. This comment takes a toll on our poor heroine, as she fears that their band's image will suffer when her identity is exposed. Once back at home, she worries about the burden of keeping her identity a secret, which could potentially hurt the rest of the band members. Later, Ty, Shin, and Jeremy bring limes to her to make her feel better. Our hero is especially concerned about her well-being, but he hides his emotions with his usual grumpy demeanor. As Mi recovers, she reflects on her situation and worries about the impact she can have on the group's success. She contemplates telling the truth to her bandmates, but fears the consequences. Unfortunately, the next day, her condition worsens as she develops a fever. Our hero wants to take her to the hospital, but she refuses, fearing that her secret will come out. Ty reluctantly accepts her decision and decides to take matters into his own hands. He cares for her throughout the night, monitoring her fever and applying cold compresses, mentioning that he feels a sense of responsibility for her well-being. The scene then shifts to the day of Mi's press conference where she secretly plans to reveal her true identity to the ANGEL members. To initiate her plan, she disappears right before the event. She then changes into her female attire to reveal the truth, but Ty learns of her intentions and tries to stop her. Just as she enters the screening hall, the lights go out. Our hero desperately tries to find her in the darkness as she walks down the aisle towards the stage. When the lights suddenly come on, her female attire is revealed. Panicked, Ty and Shin scramble to protect her secret. With time running out, the latter comes up with a weird plan. He goes on stage and surprisingly announces that the beautiful woman is actually his girlfriend. Hearing this, the reporters go into a frenzy as they finally have some news to talk about. Shin then attempts to leave with her, but the journalists keep crowding around them. Fortunately, our hero takes off his jacket and covers her head. With this, they somehow manage to escape the main hall and head to the dressing room. Meanwhile, Jeremy is left utterly speechless as he is just finding out about Mi's secret. In the dressing room, she finally comes clean to the bandmates and apologizes for deceiving them. Shin initially pretends to be shocked, but then admits that he knew about her secret all along. Jeremy also joins them and surprises everyone by kissing Mi's forehead. He is actually delighted about the fact that she's a girl. When it's Ty's turn to speak, he announces that they will support her and continue performing to avoid any harm to their band image. Mi is touched by their understanding and promises not to get caught. She then gets back into her male attire to resume her performance. 
Although the chaos is settled for now, Hai-Yi still remains a threat. Therefore, Tai mentions that they have one last obstacle to deal with. Soon Hai-Yi approaches him with her fake sweet demeanor and warns him that they will have to keep pretending to be a couple. She threatens to expose their secret if he refuses. As the news of Shin's supposed relationship with Mi spreads, the fans are heartbroken. They thought he would be dating a celebrity, not a commoner. Unfortunately, tensions rise as Tai becomes increasingly frustrated with the interactions between Shin and Mi. He becomes annoyed and overprotective, which leads to a heated argument with her. Surprisingly, he calms her down by suddenly kissing her. Mi is left shocked and confused by the kiss. Tai also appears flustered as they are left with lingering emotions. He later tries to rationalize the kiss, thinking it was because he was angry. In the next scene, our religious heroine prays to Mother Superior, expressing her desire to leave and let go of her one-sided feelings for Tai. Elsewhere, Hai is trying to find a way to send Mi back to the convent without disclosing her true identity. If she exposes the truth, Tai will surely reveal the truth about their fake relationship, which will ruin her public image. Later, the two have a tense conversation where he makes it clear that he has no romantic feelings for her and that their supposed relationship is fake. He also calls her an idiot, which deeply upsets her. Once back at the Angel agency, Tai is surprised to learn that Mi's pig nose gesture is just a trick she uses to hide her emotions. Just then, his mother Hua Ran arrives with a request. She wants him to sing for her. However, our hero is understandably cold and distant towards her. He shows deep resentment for her past actions and her lover, who happens to be a songwriter. Unbeknownst to him, the songwriter is actually Mi's father. When Hua Ron talks about her lover's twin children, Tai becomes even more agitated. It's revealed that the twins are none other than Nam and Mi, but our hero is unaware of this. As Tai heads home, he is conflicted about his feelings for his mother. He now hopes to use Mi's presence to distract him from his darker thoughts. The following day, Hei tries to monopolize the Angel member's attention using her cunning tactics. She makes up a rumor that Mi is actually having an affair with Shin Wu. Upon hearing this, our hero once again becomes jealous and insecure. A little while later, a reporter named Kim begins snooping around looking for any tidbit to create a story. Mi, who is in her feminine attire, tries to escape when she sees him. Thankfully, Shin Wu saves her by accompanying her outside the building. They then exchange a heartfelt conversation where he reveals that he knows about her feelings for Tai. Hearing this, our heroine breaks down in tears, feeling foolish for falling in love. At the same time, Hei drags Tai along for a walk outside. This is when they spot the other two chatting alone. Hei coos about how nice they look together and insinuates that they make a good couple. Tai, who is obviously jealous, approaches me and rudely comments that her dress is ugly. Later in the evening, Mi seeks out the comforting embrace of her mother superior as she cries out her heartbreak. Just then, a car screeches up to her and interrupts her thoughts. It turns out to be none other than Tai. Earlier that afternoon, he had seen a couple of photos from their recent photo shoot. She was constantly pressing her nose and using the pig gesture while looking at him. This made him realize that she had been containing her emotions for him, not Shin. In the present, Tai confronts me about her feelings and playfully gives her, quote unquote, permission to like him. He even allows her to join his fan club and hugs her tightly. Later, during the car ride home, the two share a playful moment with tangerines. Then out of nowhere, our hero asks her not to dress like a girl in front of Shin. The request takes her by surprise, but nonetheless, she agrees to it. Meanwhile, the nosy reporter Kim investigates Mi's identity, but he is misled by incorrect birth records. The situation is further complicated when Shin claims that she is his girlfriend. In the meantime, Hua Ron meets up with Aunt Jay and drops a bombshell. She was the one who caused the twins' mother's death. She did it because they were both in love with the same man, and only one could have him. Now that her biological son, Tai, and Mi are starting to develop feelings for each other, the situation has become problematic. While Ron then offers to make amends by helping them financially. Aunt Jay is torn about accepting her assistance, but she's considering it given her dire financial need. One day, Shin and Mi plan to visit his parents in Busan. Tai, as usual, tries to dissuade her from going, but she's too excited about the trip. Later, Hua Ron pays a visit to her son, and after a little chat, she realizes that he and me have grown very close. She wonders if he's aware of their complicated relationship. Elsewhere, our heroine and Shin start their journey to Busan. Ever since the incident at the main hall, the two have been pretending to be a fake couple. At the airport, he suddenly asks her if they should make their fake relationship real. He suggests they leave behind those who don't like them and start anew. Me, not understanding the deeper meaning, says she's willing to become cool idiots in love. 
A little while later, our hero arrives at the airport and learns that she didn't board the plane. Overjoyed that she listened to him, Ty gives her a heartfelt hug. He then readies himself to confess his feelings to her. At the same time, a swarm of fans descend on him for autographs. Mi decides to leave as to not catch any attention, but Ty stops her. He looks her in the eye and finally confesses his feelings to her. Having gotten that out in the open, he lets her go, but now she's so shocked that she stands in a daze. The photos of them being together also circulate online. This upsets a lot of fans, but none are more enraged than Hey I. Later, as Ty and Mi are on their way home, she suddenly admits her feelings for him. This sends our hero into a state of ecstasy. The two then decide to celebrate their relationship by having a delicious lunch together. As the days pass, the preparation for the band's new album begins, and they get pretty caught up in the upcoming music videos. During one of their rehearsals, Mi shows Ty imaginary stars. This makes him realize that she loves stars, so he plans to give her a necklace resembling it. In the next scene, Mi eventually learns about her father's past relationship with Aunt Jay. Ty also discovers the connection through his mother. Unfortunately, because of this revelation, our couple can no longer look at each other the same way. After a series of misunderstandings and emotional conflicts, their relationship becomes strained. On the other side of town, reporter Kim starts to piece together that Mi and Nam are the same person. He wants to delay publishing his story until he interviews them together. As he gets closer to the truth, Hei Yai tries to protect herself and offers to help him with his investigation. She fears being implicated in the scandal if Mi's true identity is revealed. Thankfully, Shin realizes the situation beforehand when he overhears the two talking. He then plans to take Mi away to Japan to avoid the reporter's scrutiny. Our heroine agrees to this, and she plans to leave A and Jell for good. Her departure creates tension and sadness among the members, especially Tai, who struggles with his feelings for her. Meanwhile, Hua Ron becomes entangled in a scandal related to a song. It turns out that the song was initially written by Mi's father for his wife. However, Hua Ron, the mistress, killed the poor woman and took credit for the song. She did all this hoping that the audience would buy into the emotional love story and she would gain more fame and publicity. Tai learns all about this, so he angrily confronts his mother. Elsewhere, as Shin returns from Japan, he encounters the real Nam, who has been away for months. At the same time, reporter Kim arrives to expose Nam and Mi, as he believes they're the same person. Without thinking, he approaches the pop star and threatens to expose the truth. Thankfully, this time it's the real Nam, so the reporter's attempts fail terribly. A few days later, Tai visits our girl in Japan to tell her the truth. He reveals that the song was actually meant for her mother, not Hua Ron, who had falsely claimed the song and attempted to secure copyright for it. Mi is stunned by the revelation, but decides to put her past behind her for now. The two then share a heartfelt conversation and make amends. After returning from Japan, the group continues to work on their album, and the real Mi starts gaining more attention and popularity among the fans. This makes Jeremy jealous, as everyone seems to be forgetting about him. Now that everyone's back to normal, Mi decides it's the right time to rejoin her convent. Later, she stops at a storefront to observe some stars on display. When she turns around, she spots Tai through the crowd. The world goes silent as the two stare at each other until Mi breaks the moment by bowing and greeting. Tai tries to find his way out of the crowd, but when he looks over at her, she disappears. In the next scene, Nam and Hoon run into Mi in the street and the two siblings stop to chat. She discovers that her brother is soon to make an appearance at a pop concert, which makes her happy. Nam then asks if it would be possible to meet him before she leaves. However, she reveals that she's headed to Africa to aid a fellow nun in charity work. It turns out she's leaving the day of her brother's debut concert. Just then, Hoon asks if she will leave without seeing the others. Our heroine answers that she's always watching them from afar and has been keeping up with all of their news. He then asks if something happened between her and Tai, because the latter never asked about her when she was in Japan. This troubles our girl, but she decides it's best for them not to meet. Not willing to give up, Hoon tells a fib and asks her to impersonate her brother one last time. Our girl doesn't want to go down that path again, but when he keeps on insisting, she reluctantly agrees. Meanwhile, Tai is in turmoil wondering why Mi ignored him. He goes through various scenarios, imagining why she might have disappeared from his sight. He is hurt and confused, believing she has abandoned him once again. Later, Mi impersonates her brother and tries to convince everyone that she's the real Nam. She is trying to cover up her sudden absence and departure. However, Jeremy and Shin are smart enough to catch her deceit, and they eventually expose her. As they demand answers, Hoon takes our girl away. In the meantime, Tai finally realizes that he's been too harsh on Mi, who's just trying to protect herself by keeping her distance. 
He believes he has lost her and tries to move on. But he does confront her about her actions and mixed signals she has sent. In response, she breaks down in tears and reveals her emotional turmoil. She also discloses that she is leaving for Africa. Our hero is shocked by the revelation, but decides to let her go. He believes this is the best choice for both of them, as it's clear they can't be together. Some days later, Juan Ron reaches out to me seeking her forgiveness. However, our kind heroine encourages her to approach her son and make amends with him instead. She claims that Ty has always longed for his mother's love. The woman heeds her advice and visits her son's place. Our hero doesn't want anything to do with her, but when Hua Ron starts begging, he lets her in. He eventually acknowledges her attempt to reconnect with him and calls her mother for the first time. He also learns that Mi was the one who set up their reunion. Consequently, Tai is jolted out of his stubborn pride. He finds Mi's location from Hoon and speeds to the orphanage, where he asks a kid where her teacher went. When he learns that she has already left, he wonders where to go next. Just then, his attention is caught by the pictures the kid is holding. They're all pictures of stars. He looks around the room, which is plastered with similar photos. He then remembers Mi's promise, where she once said that she would think of him every time she saw stars. This is proof that she's always thinking of him and still loves him. The little girl then adds that there's a quote-unquote most handsome star that her teacher is going to see today. She is actually talking about the upcoming concert. Our hero understands the implication and speeds back to the arena, where Mi is one of the multitude of fans waiting for the concert to begin. She eyes her watch, worried that she may not be able to see much or anything at all before she has to leave for Africa. When Ty arrives at the arena, he tells the others that Mi is here in the audience. But when he goes on stage, he can't spot her among the vast crowd. Trying to think of a solution, he changes their concert plan and decides to start things off with a solo. He then takes the stage and begins to sing his original song. While doing so, he is continuously squinting at the audience, hoping he can find her. As he wraps up the song, Mi starts to leave. But our hero grabs a microphone and asks her to stay. Moved to tears, she turns around and slowly starts making her way toward the front again. But the problem is that Tai still can't see her. This is when Shin gets an idea. He asks the producer to cut the stage lights and turn on the house lights. With this new perspective, Tai finally spots Mi. Keeping his eyes fixed on her, he makes his way to the edge of the stage and steps among the fans as they scream excitedly. Surprisingly, the crowd lets him pass until he meets her. The show ends with a touching scene between Mi and Tai where they gaze at the night sky. He gives her a star necklace and playfully asks for it back. They then exchange sweet banter and promise to remain close, even if they are physically apart.